conversation came up about Christian nightclubs. Christian nightclubs. Not sure if you guys are keeping up with this. But before we get into that, guys, my name is Ruslan. This channel exists to encourage, empower, and inspire you to live a life that blesses God. If it's not your first time watching a video, you might as well subscribe. What are you doing? In Nashville, uh, there's a Christian nightclub that came out. Let me see if I could find the video about this. But there's a Christian nightclub. You guys seen this Christian nightclub thing? Sounds like a church youth ministry with some good marketing. Okay, so this is the Cove. And they did like a Christian nightclub thing, non-alcoholic partying. All right. You guys seen this? So I, I'm, I'm one of my acquaintances, Aaron Dews, is uh, in this video dancing. And uh, yeah, they threw a whole Christian nightclub thing. I'm not sure. You got, you got anybody heard of this? Am I the only one that, that, that's like familiar with this pocket of Christianity? So this is, this is happening. And so uh, this is now kind of sparking this incitement for other people. So this is the quote. Now, again, I think as a, like something you would do for like a youth ministry, I think that's pretty dope. 18 and up, Christian nightclub, alcohol free. And it looks like they had a, a, a pretty good turnout. It's led to some other people to say that they want to have a Christian nightclub. I don't, and again, I just, I just, I'm, 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 I'm externally processing with you guys at this point. <laughs> I'm curious to see what you guys think. Cause again, I'm just genuinely create a Christian club in Los So God told us to create a Christian club in Los Angeles. God told him to create a Christian club in Los Angeles. And his title was, I don't think what this creator is doing is technically wrong. I just think the framing and intentions are highly questionable. What do you guys think? Should Christians have their own nightclub? Okay, so I'll play you guys. Should I play her? Play you guys. Let me play you their original video. God told us to create a Christian club in Los Angeles, and we have gotten so much backlash, y'all. People told me that I was a Jezebel, told me that I was going to hell, and that I was Satan's child. Honestly, I truly... So this is P Petrina, I think is her name, and she's an artist. Uh, I listened to a little bit of her music. It's pretty dope. Um, and so this is her responding to it. I think I found what the underlying issue is. We've been giving way, way, way too much credit to the devil and to the world. To the point where we think of dancing and music and fun, and we associate that with worldly things. That's what the world does. So she says that we've, we, we, we've given too much credit to the devil, and we associate dancing, having fun with worldly things. Now, I think she's right. I think that she is onto something, because here's the thing that I found interesting. When I went to Israel and I saw how people move in Israel, how Jewish people move in Israel, how some of the Christians move in Israel, they have a healthy, I think, interaction with celebration in their culture. And I don't think we do. I think instead of teaching kids moderation and teaching kids wisdom and delaying gratification, I think we just teach abstinence. Just everything is just abstinence. So instead of like, hey, you need to understand if you have weaknesses and how to navigate against those weaknesses, or hey, you understand, like, if you're going to drink alcohol, you, you, you're not supposed to be drunk. You're not supposed to abuse it. If you're going to eat amazing food, don't abuse it. Don't become gluttonous. And instead of having those conversations, we just we just do all or nothing, right? Abstinence or, or indulgence, one of two extremes, which I think having seen purity culture, and if I'm just going to parallel this to sex, for example, for those of you... And those of us who came up under purity culture, it was like, sex is gross, sex is disgusting, sex is bad, so save it for the person you're going to marry. That, that did a lot of people in because there's people that then took them a while to reprogram their brain. Those folks that stayed pure to take a while to reprogram their brain. Now, so can the same be said specifically about dancing and having fun in this context? That's sin. Little do you know that God created dancing. God that's true. God did create dancing. David danced. God created fun. God created music and fellowship for us to enjoy. Yep. Oh, that's true. The world did not create it. They perverted it and filled it with sinful things as they always do. A Christian nightclub is actually the original intention of a space like this. Now, this is where I go. A Christian nightclub is the orig original intention of a space like this. We are not copying the world with the club, but we are restoring it back to its original purpose. This was my buddy's response. I'm curious to see what you guys God think. told us to create a Christian club in Los Angeles, and we have gotten so much backlash, y'all. People told me that I was a Jezebel. All right, I'm at the Chick-fil-A drive-thru. I mean, when I was going to respond to this, I, th I was thinking about saying something super petty, like, oh, you know, God told me to start a Christian club. You know, we're just redeeming what the world has taken away. But then I was like, you know what, let me, <laughs> let me try it. Christian strip club? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. 
address this a little more seriously. There's a lot going on here. First of all, did God tell you that? Also, why do you need a Christian nightclub? Like, what do y'all do in there? Do you need to dance every week? Like, you can sing in church. You know that's what we do, right? We sing in church. <laughs> um, if you need to dance and get your jiggy on, you know, historically the church has done those types of things in festivals mm. and events, mm. uh, which, yeah, they have done that for sure. You're not wrong there. But to create an establishment that is known for just dancing and known by the world as places where you do stuff that's pretty naughty. Uh, pretty naughty? This is hilarious. Um, why would you do that? Like, what? what's the point of that? What is the true intention there? And that's what makes me, and I think everyone who is challenging this, question whether or not God really told you this. Because did God told you this or did you want to do this? So he's more challenging, did God tell you this, or do you just want to do this? Now, Kevin has an interesting thought on this. Kevin said, uh, thank you for the super chat, by the way, uh, Kevin. He said, Kevin said, Billy Graham did say we should never change the message, but we could change the way that the message gets across a Christian club depends on environment and then someone else said this is a good take from you guys is y'all the illest chat ever isn't gen z the loneliest generation i think it's important to think of ways to create community for them back in the day youth groups used to roller skate nights with christian music yeah i mean we, we definitely roller skate night uh ball game night uh, all those sorts of things i think they were even do stuff around homecoming i believe or some sort of prom thing where they would do extensions, graduations. So I'm I'm curious, like, if someone is doing an, a Christian nightclub, is it an establishment and a business the same way you're building a bowling alley, the same way you're building a skate rink, which I think all those things are dope. So is it an establishment and a business, or is it an arm of a youth ministry that's trying to kind of leverage the idea of a clean nightclub uh, 18 and up nightclub, an alcohol free nightclub to get people into and hear the gospel and potentially get people into, into the church. I don't, I don't really know. I don't really know. I don't know. Yeah. Ring out the Martinelli's. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I really don't know how I feel about it. I think it could be a cool way to connect with people at the same time. I think if we're, yeah, I just, it, I think it's, it's hard for me to disconnect how most people danced in my days, maybe things have changed, but in my days, how most people dance and how Christians can dance in the context of an, a, a, a Christian nightclub today. You, you see what I'm getting at? So like we had something around here called, it's called the Ice House, then it was called Infernery. And it was a, it was a 16 and up alcohol free dance club. And you can go, but the, you was, folks were still grinding on each other. They were still replicating, you know, uh, acts on the dance floor it was still weird it was still weird and then you had the 19 20 year old marines that would pull up and want to talk to the 16 year old girls it was weird it was weird a lot of bad things happened uh because we had a clean well no it wasn't the clean it wasn't clean but it was like 16 and up dance club in escondido california that a lot of people went to and it wasn't a christian thing it just it was just a uh, 16 uh, and yeah ice house you remember that right the ice house, right? Uh, then it was like Inferno, Inferno. It, it had a bunch of different. So, like, I yeah, I just genuinely don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know how I feel about it. I, I, I think it would just. I would just need to see it played out. You know, we see according to the Bible that prayer is extremely important in terms of us being transformed from the inside out when we get aligned with God's will. For the Christians watching this channel, I want you guys to implement these spiritual disciplines in your day to day life. And the only way I've been able to do this consistently is through writing down my prayers in a prayer journal that does a few things. One, it allows me to reflect and come to God humbly and ask him to move on my behalf. And two, it allows me to document my prayers, which ultimately helped me remember the very things that I was praying for and see the hand of God tangibly in my life when he answers them. So I would urge you, consider writing down your prayers. It could be in a blank notebook. It could even be on your phone. Or you could check out the one I personally designed and used for my own quiet time and spiritual discipline that I think will be a huge blessing. It's the exact structure and system that I've used for years to pray and be more consistent in my spiritual disciplines. You can pick yours up today by clicking the link in the pinned comment below. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.